Okay, there are people who are anti COVID-19 vaccine because they were given information and I got the same information about the COVID-19 vaccine changing your DNA in your cells. The latest information that I got from a doctor on YouTube, a real doctor who spoke very well. He explained that the DNA involved with the COVID-19 vaccine does not enter the cell nucleus. And it simply manufactures the proteins that are found on the surface of the COVID-19 virus. So what is the purpose of producing these proteins? It's to give your immune system a head start in making antibodies to those proteins on the COVID-19 virus. So it gets your immune system all revved up before you might get exposed to COVID-19. Because the other way, the natural way that our immune system works is it gets exposed to foreign bodies and then it manufactures antibodies against them. And it takes some time for this procedure to get rolling in the body. It takes some time. And most likely a young person is gonna make more of these antibodies faster than a senior citizen because their body is finely tuned and young and old people are just slow in all ways. There is a lot of people who are on this anti-vaccine bandwagon. Like I read about Gardasil this morning uh, with Robert F. Kennedy, who I've been in and out looking at because he's uh, taken a stand against, um, I'm not exactly sure anymore. I was thinking that he was on the people's side, but the more I look at it, uh, he's got his own agenda. And um, I still think he's in bed with big corporations and deep state. Maybe he's a little bit this or that, but the whole point about these vaccines for Gardasil is to prevent a generation of young people from getting certain nasty things. Now what about the cases that they cite where people get Gardasil vaccine and then something happens to the young person who got the vaccine? We don't live, we don't live in a perfect world and it's not uniform among people. Some people, if they get bitten by a uh, sand fly, which is a little tiny fly that you find in uh, Canada in the f swampy areas, some people get bitten by a sand fly, uh, sand flies hurt, they're like, it's itchy, it stings a little bit, it's very unpleasant, and uh, your body reacts, you know, you might get a bump where that was. But some people, when they get bitten by a sand fly, uh, they go into anaphylact anaphylaxis, which is your body has an enormous immune reaction against the sand fly bite and maybe your throat swells up so much that you can't breathe. It's life-threatening.
so what are we talking about? We're talking about relative risks. Relative risks. And that's what we're doing with things like vaccines. So what I'm saying is these bad reactions that some people have are because of their personal physiology. And you can calculate statistically how many people have reactions to vaccines. And it seems to be that a certain percentage of the population does have reactions to vaccines. But humanity has had an enormous success using vaccines to get rid of childhood uh, diseases. Tremendous success. And these diseases were horrible diseases. My uncle's sister, when she was a baby, caught measles. I'm going to guess that it would be probably around 1940 when this would have happened, before the measles vaccine was available for children. My uncle's sister had to live in long-term care for her whole life. She was made mostly blind and mostly deaf and it degraded her, her mental capacity. Measles ruined that human life. It did. So shove that up your ass you anti-vax protesters that don't know your ass from a hole in the ground. Polio. My dad's school friend got polio before polio vaccine was invented. He was in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. These are serious diseases. And the vaccine has saved uncounted human lives from Horrible disfigurement, horrible, horrible things. So shove that up your ass, you anti-vax. I want to call you motherfuckers. Because you're the same as the defund the police people. You're the throw the baby out with the bathwater people. So, your solution to vaccine uh, bad events is simply uh, more scientific testing. In other words, maybe what the... I don't know if this would work, but maybe you could take a vial of uh, blood from everyone before they get the virus, or before you get the vaccine, and, um, you know, put uh, a vaccine into a sample of blood, for example, and see if... Uh, I don't know. Can you can you test this way to see if the the blood's going to have a bad reaction to it? The immune cells in the blood? I don't know. I mean, it's a whole area of research that uh, should be able to be done. There's unlimited good ideas. Unlimited good ideas for making these kind of medical products safer. But to say, no, I'm not going to give my kid these vaccines, you're doing a disservice to your kid based upon your rigid intellectual opinion that all vaccines are dangerous. So it's relative risk. And it's statistical. And some things are a way bigger risk than others. 
So you just compare your risks and um, go with the least risky routine. Because that's the wisdom path. Take your best available information and apply it to your situation.